Okay, hello, this is uh, Dr. Janes, and today I'm going to talk about how to build a simple circuit to drive a piezoelectric uh, speaker element, or piezoelectric actuator, or whatever. And um, it just requires an extra inductor, and I'm going to talk about the details of that. And I'll have links below where you can order these parts if you want to do exactly this project. And um, I guess let's get started. Okay, here is our full circuit, and um, I'll just go through the components. This is our FET driver, it's a TC4424A, and it's got, uh, you can drive two different FETs. It's got two inputs on this side and two outputs, and so our signal is going to come in, and we're going to go into input A. You could use input B also. It'll go through the FET driver and then into the gate of our FET, which is a IRL640A. And you could use a different FET if you want. And there's a damping resistor between the gate and the drain here of 2.4K. Actually, I have multiple resistors here because uh, then it shares the power load. And, um, and there's a capacitor to power this uh, uh, FET driver is here so you can get a good peak power there uh, switching the FET on and off because you want to switch these off quickly or they have a lot of losses and there's the value of that capacitor and then I've been using uh, motorcycle batteries at 12 volts and the positive is hooked up to the positive of this capacitor and the negative to the negative and that goes into the ground and the VDD of the FET driver and all the grounds are hooked together. The source of our FET is hooked to the ground of the source of this guy. It's hooked to the ground of the source of our signal generator, which is, this is our frequency source that's coming in. And the way we drive our FET is, you could put an optional battery up here, or you could just drive it straight off of this battery at 12 volts. And here's our FET, or I mean our piezoelectric device. And this is the extra here, our piezoelectric device. That's this guy right there. And it has the inductor, our extra inductor here. Okay. Right there in parallel with this guy, so that when you switch the FET on and off, it will drive current through th this FET. It'll charge it up when it's off, and then when it's on, it will dump the current through this inductor and cause this LC circuit to ring here. And, of course, that goes through the drain and down to ground of the battery. And there we go. There's our complete circuit. Okay. A very simple circuit. And anyway... Okay, just got this one. Oh, it's my inductors. Look at that. Oh, and my speakers. I sent them together. This is my high power inductors. Okay. And uh, I got some <clears throat> interesting experiments planned with these. Usually you can't find high power inductors like in normal kits or whatever. This is a range of them. And I needed to do some high power stuff where I'm going to be tuning some uh, resonant circuits or somewhat resonant circuits and uh, let's, let's just take a look here. Let's open this guy up. Okay. Oh, I want to make sure it's right side up. Comes in a nice little plastic box here. And uh, let me test some of the values in this in a little bit. Okay, so here we have our kit of inductors that I just ordered. And here is our universal LCR meter. Let's turn that guy on. Just want to check some of the values of these guys. Let's see how, um, I guess, so this thing measures it at a kilohertz. And of course, um, well, inductance in principle shouldn't be dependent on the frequency, but... Um, Let's do this. I'm just going to hook this guy up 
to the clip leads. Oh, these clip leads are getting bent a little bit. So, spread these guys apart. Inductance in theory, sh you know, is a function of frequency, but it should be a constant, like um, a mega L for the impedance. But um, I guess if you go up to very high frequencies, like in the microwave range, or starts to produce multi-modes, or the circuit's no longer, the, the inductor's no longer small compared to the wavelength, then certain issues can arise. And I'm sure there's other times when it's... Uh, Things are not ideal. Okay, anyway, so we have this set on the inductance setting, and it looks like the smallest one is 8 microhenries. Okay. So the, we have 8 mic microhenries for our smallest inductor. Let's get that guy off of there. And let me just look at the biggest value. I'm assuming this is the biggest value. It's the biggest inductor here. Okay. And we'll just see what this guy is. And uh, I'm going to actually try to do some experiments with high power piezoelectric devices using these. Make sure the clip leads don't touch. Okay. Okay, so it looks like we got the leads on there good. And the t biggest one is 10 millihenries. Okay. So now that we know what the range is, I'll be able to do some calculations because I, I have this speaker element and I want to uh, match it with an inductor because uh, piezoelectric devices look like a capacitor, right? And so I'll be doing some videos on that and my high power circuit here to drive piezoelectric devices. And I think I talked about that in one of my videos and I'm going to talk about it some more. And anyway, it'll be nice to have a bunch of high power inductors so I can match different elements that are capacitive. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So, what I want to do, there I have uh, my piezoelectric speaker element. These are pretty cheap, and they put out quite a bit of power. And um, I think you can hear it clicking. It's actually measuring. I have my uh, universal LRC meter here. It's measuring the uh, capacitance, and it's about uh, 104 nanofarads. Okay. So the problem is, is that I wanted to build a simple driver circuit, and this is basically putting out pulsating AC, and it can be at high power. I use car batteries or motorcycle batteries to drive it, and it has a FET driver in the front, and uh, I can't read the... Anyway, I'll probably put that in the comment or uh, above the video. And uh, high power FET, and I just use a socket so I can change it out if I burn burn these out. I have both of these in a socket, so it's a very s simple circuit to maintain if it um, something burns out on it because I just unplug the components and plug in new ones. And I put some resistors in there. I have a video called um, I believe it's like. Uh, damping ringing fets or something like that and I talk about the circuit in that one so I put that in the description oh, or in the end screens and um, anyway so I'm getting off track this thing produces it's a very simple circuit but it produces a pulsating uh, D, uh, AC signal and to r drive a piezo since it's a capacitor these are these uh, like an open circuit so it can't you can only drive it for one one half of a cycle you couldn't discharge it and so the idea is is that if I create an LC circuit where I put one of these in inductors in parallel with this guy it will it will discharge it and if I have it tuned to about the right frequency that I want it to then it will still be able to get a high power through it you know of course if the inductance is too small it'll act like a short and short it out and if it's uh, too big, it, the charge is going to build up on the capacitor and, and you're not going to get as much power through it. You, you always want your load to be matched. All electrical engineers know that. Okay, let's take a look up here. Okay, okay so here's the idea that we would have our driving circuit, but it's not going to be an AC circuit. It's going to be a pulsating circuit. And, you know, I'm, I'm driving some of these... Uh, speaker elements and they're basically inductive so they would look something like this 
so they can be driven easily with a pulsating uh, DC circuit like what I have here but when I put this on here it, see the capacitor is an open circuit and so if it's got a uh, you know a discharge itself between pulses it can't because uh, it's basically an open circuit it'll charge it up once and then it will not discharge and so if I put a, an inductor in in parallel with it then uh, this becomes an LC circuit and it will discharge through the inductor and actually ring negative possibly also so you can conserve some of that power and then in the next pulse it will charge up the capacitor and then discharge through the inductor and so that's what I'm hoping to achieve so I can still use this very simple circuit not only on uh, speaker elements like this but also on capacitive elements that are not inductive like this piezoelectric device okay and so with our new inductor kit here I'm going to do some calculations and probably have to use the biggest inductor I'm going to guess because the frequency is very low these speaker elements only have a range up to about 20 kilohertz oh. and so let me do some calculations and we'll try to figure out um, <coughs> what what uh, what ele uh, inductor element we should use for our simple circuit here okay, okay so our capacitance is about 103 nanofarads and the biggest inductor we have is 10 millihenries and I was going to start there because I was worried it may not be enough to create a low enough resonant frequency for us and um, if we look at the equation for a resonant frequency of a LC circuit it's 1 over 2 pi and the square root of LC and so if I do the calculations in our spreadsheet here looks like it's about 5 kilohertz a little bit less than 5 kilohertz so actually I wanted a resonance frequency more like 20 kilohertz or so because that's where the high power is so we can actually go a little bit lower in our inductance and um, let me let me see what the next lower value of the induct uh, in our inductor box is so this this big inductor was about 10 millihenries so let's try the next size down which is maybe this one Let's take one of those out and measure it and see what we get. Okay. I'm assuming that usually the size of the inductor is related to uh, how much inductance it has. Okay. Let me get this thing hooked up. Well, we still have a, the big inductor on there. Okay, and well, looks like this one's about one millihenry, so it's a factor of ten less. So let's let's try putting that into our spreadsheet here. Instead of uh, ten millihenries, it will be one millihenry. Okay, so we'll just add an extra zero there, and well, lo and behold, it's about fifteen kilohertz. So maybe maybe the smaller inductor in uh, in series with our piezoelectric element will give us a resonant frequency close to where we want to be, and we can uh, do some interesting tests with that. Just use a very simple circuit to drive a piezoelectric unit. Okay, just by matching it with an inductor. We got an inductor here from our kit. Okay, we'll try that out. Okay, so we have our inductor here and our piezo element. And I think I'll just um, solder these guys together like that. Usually I like to use clip leads, but it's, these leads are really short on this, ouch, on this uh, inductor. And uh, solder is cheap. Ooh, hurt myself there. Can I do this with uh, two hands? We'll see. Anyway. Let's see if we can get some solder on here and then tack that thing on. 
Uh, can I? Oh, shit. i get the first one on. Let it harden a little. Oh. Come on. And we'll solder the second one down. Okay. And then our element should be matched up to about 15 kilohertz. And we should be able to go either side of that to some extent and uh, get some kind of frequency uh, output of this guy. Okay. Well, let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, here's our motorcycle batteries, our high power circuit driver, our piezoelectric with the inductor matching on the back of it. Okay. I don't know if you can see that okay, but there it is. Uh, they're both black, so it's hard to see, right? And um, I got my earplugs in because I don't want to lose my hearing. The stuff's really loud. And uh, so let's just hook it up. Basically, the way this works, I'll explain this circuit a little bit, is uh, I'm using my signal generator up here to put a signal into the FET driver. And then that FET driver drives the FET at the gate. So the output of the FET driver goes into the gate. All the t grounds are tied together. The ground of the FET is tied to the ground of the FET driver. It's tied to the ground of, um, well, basically the load of the speaker is going to go above the FET. So it's going to be, be between the battery positive up here. We'll have our load, and then it will go into the FET, and the sweat FET will periodically periodically switch that to ground or so it'll be an open circuit and then it will dump the current to ground so when it's an open circuit it will charge up the capacitor and then when it closes it will short it out and that's what will drive the pulsating AC through through this guy actually I said that wrong when it shorts it out it'll drive current through it and when it's open it'll drive no current because the loads above it I'm sorry anyway so it's the just the backwards from what I said before when it shorts out it creates a uh, short circuit through the load so it drives current through the load and then when it opens up the uh, inductor will ring backwards and power our device hopefully and so here is the other end of our clip lead and let's hook it up to the battery and see it's definitely working it's definitely putting out lots of uh, ultra or sonic energy so let's let's compare it to one where we didn't put the inductor on okay so let me let me switch this out. I got the clip leads hooked onto this guy, and I'll just unhook them. Okay, and we'll just hook up a piezo element that has no inductor, so it's going to be like an open circuit. So it really shouldn't work very well, unless there's some current leaking through this device. It should not really produce a lot of sound. Okay, you hear that? Nothing. I'm touching the battery. Nothing. Okay, because it can only charge up once. It can't discharge without some kind of uh, path to ground like this this inductor here provides. Okay, so you need that inductor in the circuit or else it will not work at all. Let's hook this guy back up. This is the prestige of the magic show, right? Show you that I didn't blow out the circuit or something that this thing still works. Okay. And we'll hook up get the other end of that clip lead. Okay, here it is. There we go. It. So a very simple circuit to uh, drive piezoelectrics at high power. Okay. And there's our element with our inductor on it. Okay, get a good view of that. And anyway, this is, um, hopefully this is helpful. This is uh, Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.